This is going to be my major project that I've got to do. Almost every 2004, probably 2000, all the way to 2008, maybe even more, but Pontiac and GM had a real problem with what they call their instrument clusters. right here and that is your speedometer that's your gas gauge oil pressure your tachometer they all at some point there's a little motor behind each needle that drives that needle and works that needle those little motors go out and that's the problem I'm having here 2004 Pontiac Montana so I've looked at a lot of videos I've done a lot of research I'm not a mechanic but I'm good enough that I think I can be able to take care of this problem by myself. It's going to take removing this part of the dashboard, some of this trim, and eventually I'll get to that cluster. It's called an instrument cluster. Bring it out of the dash, send it in, and either have someone rebuild this one, or they will send me one that's already been rebuilt. I take it, put it back in, put it all back together, and I'll be ready to go. So that is the biggest challenge I'll have with the Montana, with the 2004 Montana, but I think I can take care of it and I think I'm gonna be able to fix it. Okay, I'll show you what's kind of going on. Put the key in, start it up, the lights work. Okay, the Montana with its 3.4 liter engine is running, as you can see. The speedometer is stuck on 100. Maybe somebody was going 100. I'm not sure. The Montana is a pretty peppy little vehicle. Hey, my, I know my fuel tank is full because when I bought it at the dealer, I made sure to top it off right away. And the tachometer, not working. So that's your cluster. I know the lights are working in it. Behind it, the needles and stuff all light up. I do appreciate you coming to the channel. That's LAF Space Film Fest capital LAF Space Film Fest. One thing I found on YouTube, I did the research, was somebody suggested you unhook your battery, wait a few minutes, hook your battery back up, maybe it reset the computer, maybe that was the problem. Tried that, no good. I have researched over and over and over again on trying to find instructions on how to get this cluster out, and there doesn't seem to be any at all. Maybe on YouTube, this will be the first and comprehensive guide to removing this cluster or this may turn out to be a cluster I'm trying to do this because it's not it's not easy there's no instructions or anything next I got to I got my little screwdriver my experimental tool is what I call it and I started popping around and I got this lower panel here to pop loose and you can see it's got some brackets in there that pop in and out it didn't seem like it gave, it led me anywhere. I didn't see any screws in here or anything that I could get apart. I think maybe that was a dead end, hitting that little panel right there. You can kind of see in there. I'm sure that would give you access to certain things, but for what I'm doing, it doesn't seem to help at all. So then I took my little experimental tool and started popping around, and voila! This little piece of trim here pop loose. And you can see it's got a, a little bracket here that fits back in. So whenever I go to put it back together, I'll be able to just uh, push it, push it back on there and it'll pop back together. So now what I'm doing is I'm just working my way slowly across, slowly across, and I think if I can get this panel here loose, then it'll expose the instrument cluster and it'll have four screws in it. Take it apart, unplug it. I may be on the road to success. But we will see how it goes. It's still a little bit early to claim victory. OK, 
Okay, so that was a big step to accomplish right there. You got to be able to take this trim piece off in order to get to the instrument cluster. So as you can see, I have got it off. It didn't take any screws. It has a lot of these pop-in rivets, pop-in mechanisms that will pop into a slot. And that's what kind of holds it, kind of a compression fit. It had a couple up here at the top that you had to kind of bend down a little bit. Now, in order to get this out, the one thing I had to do was I had to turn my key on and put my vehicle, put the transmission all the way down in the first gear, as low as possible. And I also had to lower my steering wheel all the way down. Even with that, I'm gonna warn you, it's a trick. It's very difficult to get it out and work it, work it, work it, and finally get it to come out of there. Kind of makes me a little nervous too, because it's so cold, I think this plastic would probably crack pretty easy. But there it is. You have to take out this piece right here. And I started it by just taking a little screwdriver and working it. There's a little slot here. There's a slot there. There's one right here. Once I got that pop loose, I was able to accomplish that. Now, down here, there's two screws on each side of your cup holder. You bring your cup holder out, and I actually, if you get in there and mess with the brackets on your cup holder, you can get to drop down just a little bit. And I was able to get a screwdriver in there, loosen that up, because this panel, this decorative panel around your radio, also clips in to this panel right here. In order to get this panel out, you have to loosen this one and get this one loose, so that'll come out. There we go. My instrument cluster is now exposed. So there should be some screws to hold this on. And then once I remove it, here's I've got some wires right here. And it should all come out. And then what I'll do is I'll end up sending this into a dealer, have him either rebuild it or I send him this one and he'll send me another one back in return because they want a core charge to do this. So I'm pretty happy with that. That was the big big problem with the 2004 Pontiac Montana that is now the LAF Space Film Fest Machine Workhorse Mule. Whatever. It's here. We're going to go a lot of places. Fact, so far, so good. Okay, this gives you a little better idea what's going on. Here's the tabs that hold this trim piece on. You have two at the bottom right here. I got a feeling it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to snap this back in. Like I said, it was not easy. Those, those clips go in these little holes right here. It wasn't easy to get out, but it's the only thing you can do is just try to work it out. So now here's my instrument cluster. And I can already see that I have, I get that. I can already see that I have a screw there. And there's one over here. And uh, looks like up here in the corner, there's gonna be a screw up in there, which the camera will not pick out. Let me see if I can slide a flashlight in there there we go there's a screw right there there's one right back there then the cluster will come out here's the wire harness right here I'll unplug it be ready to go okay so far the operation is working pretty good but I can tell you this I would not want to try this with somebody else's vehicle just the fact that this plastic especially in the winter time yeah it's brittle and it's anything could crack that panel could have cracked coming off it's just one of those things that you know i don't care if a panel cracks on me it a crack in the panel is not going to worry me with a montana cruising down the road but if you're working on somebody else's vehicle they're probably not going to like that and then you get into a real problem this task right here is a little bit difficult i can tell you this that in order to get it out when I did shift the vehicle, you have to turn your key on and you got to take your shifter, go all the way down to number one. And when you do that though, I was sure to 
make sure I use the emergency brake and I also put a couple pieces of wood behind the tires just to make sure it wasn't going to take off and roll on down the driveway. Now here's a little trick that I'll use. I've got this little magnet so when I take these screws out I have my magnet down there my magnet will grab it and that way I can pull the screw right on out you don't want to lose a screw down inside this dashboard somewhere that would be a real now, this problem. is one of the tools that I've collected through the years my dad gave this to me and it really works out good I've used it a lot of times and I actually have dropped screws and bolts down in an engine I'm able to reach down there and pick it up and pull it right out okay I have all four screws out of the panel and here it here we go it comes right on out nice that's what I was wanting to see right there Definitely, definitely comes right on out. Okay, let's see if we can get this panel out of here. The cluster out. Ooh, tight. It's tight, man, for sure. Wow. Turn signal on there. There we go. Come on, baby. Come on out of there. Come on, cluster. Be a cluster, cluster. All right. I have got two sets of wires hooked up to it. A right side. It comes unhooked. And a left side. If you just squeeze these little panels here. There we go comes unhooked and look at that there we go now I'm finding different prices on the internet so I'm looking around it seems like there's quite a few places these days that build these it's my understanding a brand new one from the dealer is gonna run somewhere maybe as high as $500 for a brand new one I'm finding that people will rebuild these and they'll want a core charge for this they want this one to be sent to them and then in return they'll send you either they'll either repair this one and send it back or they have one ready to go and they put it in a box and send it like one place says a one day turnaround and there's all kind of videos on YouTube if you wanted to try to fix this yourself this one guy said 20 bucks and you can fix it. but you've got to take this panel apart and then you open it up and then there's your control board you got to take these little stepper motors out put a new one in and you got to solder them back in really easy stuff for somebody that knows how to do that but i don't i've really never done any soldering before i think it'd be worth it for me just to send this one in get a new one plug it in and then send it on its way installation would just be the reverse i'm gonna plug it back in set it in there put my screws back in take this panel hook it up and hopefully everything will be just fine as wine that way give you an update on the instrument cluster for the 2004 Montana you can see I've got it all taken out everything went well so what I did was I went to O'Reilly's and I took the instrument cluster with me because it's got a lot of numbers and stuff on it that you have to make sure that everything matches because there's so many different varieties so many different models so I took it in there I thought about ordering online I could have bought it cheaper online but I got a little nervous when I started trying to match the numbers up and and like one of the companies, Dorman, uh, Dorman sells a real nice instrument cluster. It's been rebuilt, remanufactured. I don't know, when I started matching the numbers up, it made me nervous. All electronics are non-refundable. So I did not want to order this, have it come in and be the wrong one, and then try to return it. That could just get into a total night. So what it ended up being is, it was $307 is what O'Reilly's charged me for it. They're getting it from Dorman, and they have to order it from Dorman. Looks like Dorman had 10 in stock. 
I went ahead and turned in my old instrument cluster because there's a $300 core charge. So if I didn't have it out of the vehicle and I just went in there and wanted to order it before I got it, before I took this one out, they would charge me $600, over $600 for it. And then when you take your old one in there, you get the $300 core off. So I'm glad I went ahead and took this one off. So $307 plus tax. They've got my old instrument cluster, so they've got the $300 core. It is, today is Monday, and it should be here at their store by Friday. So by the weekend, I should be able to put everything back together. So that's the way it works. It's not cheap. $307, a lot of money. Thing is, especially when you have a vehicle that you know you're going to hold on to, if it is a Pontiac Montana, if you haven't had trouble with them, you're going to have trouble with them because everything that I read is that the clusters failed and it should have been a recall from GM and Pontiac. It should have been a recall. Because too many hundreds of thousands of vehicles that failed. For some reason, they slipped through. They didn't do a recall. I'll show you how I'll put it back together, which should be very, very simple. Now that I've got it all apart, figuring out how to take it apart was the hard part. Putting it all back together, hopefully, fingers crossed, should be a lot better. Then I'll get this baby on the road. Not sure where I'll go, but I'm hoping it'll take me there. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Ah, yes, I just received instrument cluster from O'Reilly's Auto Parts, is where I ordered it from. You can see it comes in a, doesn't really come in much of a packaging, just a, a clear bag. Take it out. Looks just like the one I took out. It's in good shape. The one I took out looked brand new. So this one here, oh, here we go. This instrument cluster has replaced the original equipment part. And it comes with that sticker right there, saying that it is from Dorman. And it's my understanding Dorman is the best. There are other places out there, but they are the best. I'm gonna see if it all goes together. I'm keeping my fingers crossed because I've never done this before. And I'm hoping everything's gonna go okay. I'm hoping I'm gonna hook this up. I'm gonna turn that key and it's going to work. All the gauges are going to whoop, go where they need to go. We're going to find out right now. This is live action. All right, I've got my instrument panel here. I've got my wires and my other wire right there. We're going to take the panel and there are two areas here that you can plug it in. And because the way the wire system, the harness system's in here, I really can't reverse them. One goes on one side and one goes on the other. Take the one that goes on the left side, plug it in. All right. That seemed to go pretty smooth. Oh, didn't have it in all the way. Woo, would have been a disaster. I just thought I had got a bad instrument cluster. All right, so now the one on the other side, I'm gonna have to drop it down in the slot here a little bit. And grab this one that's on the other side here. There it is. And I am going to plug it in. The other side, the right hand side. Okay. Let's see what happens. Got both of them in. Okay. Now I'm gonna try to get it back in there again where it went. Alright. Top goes in first. All right, so it's gonna go, okay. Pretty easy to put back in. I'm gonna get a couple screws started here before I turn the key on to see if it's gonna work. All right. Oh, look out. Screw slipped out, no problem. Everything's under control. 
A lot of times on my construction videos, I'll say, don't worry about it, highly trained professional here. But you gotta worry about it because I am not a highly trained mechanical specialist. But we're giving it a shot. We're giving it the old American way here. Called a mechanic place that just opened up not far from my place here and talked to him on the phone, told him what I had. He seemed a little puzzled, said, okay, I'll call you back here in a couple hours, give you a price on doing that. It's been 10 days I ain't heard from him. It tells me something right there. It tells me something. He doesn't want to mess with the cluster. I'll mess with it myself. Where that goes. All right. Got one screw in. Gonna try to get this other one in here. These screws are just pretty easy to get to. It would be, you know, if I had the proper tools, I'm pretty sure they make a screwdriver that's clamps on the end of it that clamps on the screwdriver and you can kind of just get it in there and get it started. I don't have anything like that. I've got the old Stone Age Phillips going here, so I struggle just a little bit, but it's going to work. Okay. All right. So that's two screws in the cluster. So what I'm going to do at this point, the keys. Here we go. Moment of truth. got the gas gauge the gas gauge is working hackometer is working all right so I'm thinking at this point everything's gonna work and we're good to go so now I got to put all this back together yes Okay, I'm really glad that cluster works. Okay, got my magnetic and got the screw on my magnetic here. Let's see, because these, the ones at the top are kind of hard to get to. They're kind of back in there to do a little video and put a little video of this operation on YouTube. It's just because it's just so hard to get back in here. One thing I learned in my construction days is like any time you go and do a remodel job, the worst you can do is walk in there with a sledgehammer and start smashing stuff. You don't ever want to do that on a construction project. You know, and even if it is a tear out, surgically remove the stuff and that way it'll go back together so much better. Because almost every time, if you're in there and you're slamming stuff with a sledgehammer, you're probably going to end up tearing some more stuff out that when you put it back together, you'll think, oh man, if I would have torn that out, I wouldn't have to be replacing this part right here. So just surgically remove it. And that's kind of how I did on this instrument cluster in order to in order to get it hooked up. Just right. So there we go. So now I got all, all four screws back in the cluster. And the cluster is set. And the cluster is working. And in fact, I am going to try it one more time just to be safe. Yep. Those gauges are working. I'll put that key in there and ready. There we go. See that the gas the gas gauge needle was way laying over here. Of course, the temperature gauge uh, hasn't really moved. It's I haven't just now started it up. It's still pretty cold. It sat well. It sat for seven days here, and it's been it's gotten down in the twenties at night. But you can see the nice thing is the tack over here. It's working. A race car. It's a race van. Okay, so I am glad, I am glad, glad, glad to see that. Now, let me see if I can't get these body parts put back on here. Get this dash put back together and then I'll be ready to go. Then I can start working on the back. Okay, in order for this to come out, I know the one thing I had to do is I had to put the key in and I had to drop this all the way down into first gear. 
like that right there, okay? And then this guy somehow, oh boy. I know it was extremely tight getting out of here. I know one of the first things I gotta do is try to get it underneath the steering wheel. That explains why my why my emergency flashers were on right there. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. I think it just now went in there. And you got these tabs that kind of hold it. Wow, daggone, look at that. Whoop. That's still kind of tight right there. Alright. 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 Happy with that. That is just that popping back in there like nobody's business. Woohoo! All right. That was sweet. Boom. So I just have a few more pieces to put back in. This radio piece, I'll slip it back in there. And this piece, it got a couple clips. But daggone, that, that wasn't bad at all. I got a 2004 Pontiac. Montana. I had to replace the cluster on it, the instrument cluster. Sounds like they all go bad. Put it back together just now. Ended up costing me $342 for the part. Ordered it from Dorman through O'Reilly's Auto Parts. I may have got it cheaper, ordered it direct, but I wasn't sure and I wanted O'Reilly's as a middleman just in case something went bad. I'd take it back to O'Reilly, say, hey, you guys were the one that ordered it. You got to make it right. So I was kind of buying myself a little bit of an insurance policy there. There's your official Dorman sticker with it. And I do appreciate that. I see Mrs. Melissa just now pulled in. So she's going to be excited that I got the Montana. The Montana is going to hit the road pretty soon. I appreciate you coming to the channel. That's LAF Space Film Fest. That is capital LAF Space Film Film Fest. Oh man, Montana, here I come in the Montana. You have a good day.